Hi guys, welcome to the kitchen. What are we gonna do today? Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We are going to create a soca pizza. I call it soca pizza. It's basically a flatbread made out of chickpea flour and water. And we're gonna use that to create a delicious pizza out of. So I'm gonna stand by it. I call it soca pizza. So what this involves is your basic pourable batter that is going to crisp up in the oven. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our batter together. So what we're going to need for that is we're going to need some chickpea flour and you can get that at uh, most um, Indian Middle Eastern grocery stores uh, if you can't find it at your regular grocers. We're going to season the batter with some basil and oregano. I got half a teaspoon of each and half a teaspoon of salt. And this is basically going to be our measuring device. Soka pizza, the batter, is made with one part chickpea flour and one part water. So I'm going to use this measuring cup for each part. And I'm going to do uh, two of flour and two of water into here. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to let it chill out and rest just on the counter for about 15 minutes just to allow the chickpea flour to absorb all of the moisture. So let's get measuring. So what we're going to do, unlike baking, it doesn't have to be super precise. I'm just going to shake off the excess. There's one. And there's two. This kind of supper is my favorite go-to for when I haven't taken anything out of the fridge or when I have leftovers, like leftover veg, just enough to put on a pizza but not enough to make for a proper side or when I have leftover meat. So just think of your favorite pizza, right? Today what we're going to do is we're going to do veg and we're going to do bacon. So, if you had leftover chicken or roast beef or anything like that, it's fair game. Fair game. Okay, so I'm going to give this a stir before I put in my seasoning. So just go slowly to begin with. And if you're not accustomed to eating a lot of um, chickpeas, legumes, that kind of thing, what you'll find is after you've let the batter rest for a bit, you'll get lots of bubbles on the top. And if you're not used to eating beans, then you're going to want to take that foam off the top because that's basically is what's going to make you noisy if you get my drift. So once, once you're used to eating a decent amount of um, beans and legumes, then you'll be fine with it. You get accustomed to it. But when you're first starting out, uh, yeah, take the foam off. Okay, so we're going to give this a good stir. Try to get all the lumpy bumpies out. You don't have to go crazy, though, because we're going to let it just rest for 15 minutes. You can let it rest for up to three hours. If you want to stick it in the fridge, that's not a problem either. You can do it in the morning. Put it in the fridge, and it'll be ready to go when you get home. Okay, so we're going to put our basil in, and because it's the crust and we're going to heat it at really high heat, I'm using dried herbs. You can put some garlic in there, you can put uh, maybe some hot spice in there, anything you want, anything you want. So, I'm also actually going to put a little bit, about a teaspoon of olive oil into the mix. There we go. Now, that is all there is to making this batter. That's it, guys. That's it. That's all. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that rest, and we're going to come back when it's all done. Okay. We're back. It's been about 15 minutes and our batter has rested and there's 
there's a thin layer of bubbles on the batter and if you go across with a spoon you'll actually be able to see the bubbles so these are the bubbles all right and if you want to get rid of them you can and you can just put them down the sink and but over time you become accustomed and you won't be quite so noisy if you get my meaning so this has thickened up a little bit you're not going to notice a huge difference in the in the thickness of the batter so what we've done in the, while we were waiting was we cut up some of what we'd like to put on our pizzas so we've got some lovely mozzarella you can put whatever kind of cheese you'd like on there you can mix in some parmesan if you like that's fine tonight we are going to be using uh, some red and yellow peppers some thinly sliced mushrooms and I, I like to cut everything fairly thin because it's not going to cook very long okay and of course our bacon and I just sliced sliced it up like this so the other thing is we're not actually going to be making a tomato sauce for this we are going to um, put on a little layer of oil that's it though okay and like I say if you want to sprinkle up on additional seasonings or what have you go right ahead now I am using cast iron and right now I'm heating up the cast iron in the oven it has it's in the middle rack it has no oil in it okay it's on broil okay I don't have it up high high in the oven I have it in the middle okay so we're getting it up to temperature and then we're going to bring them out and we're going to put oil in them. Now the act of putting oil in them is actually going to cool down the pan. So we're going to put them back in the oven only for a couple of minutes just to bring the temperature back up again. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pour in our batter. So I've got two 10 inch pans here and I've got three adults to feed. So I'm going to divvy up this batter into two equal portions and I like to put them in a measuring cup that I can um, pour really easily. So this is going to be about, let's just pour it all in, okay, so we can measure it exactly. Okay, so here's our batter. And we have two and a half cups. So we want it one and a quarter cup each for each pizza. So like I said, if you wanted just to do one 10 inch pizza, remember this is a thin crispy crust. You can just do one cup chickpea flour, one cup water. But I wanted to double it. So we've got one and a half cups or two and a half cups. So we're going to go one and a quarter cup in here. And now these two cups are ready to pour into our hot, hot pans. Now, because we're, uh, we're dealing with cast iron, we are going to want to wear our gloves and we're going to want to be very, very careful. Okay. Focus on what you're doing. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the pans out and we're going to oil them. We're going to throw in some oil about a tablespoon okay there we go there's one and we're gonna put some oil in there and you'll see it kind of ripply already and that might be a little bit much we can put pour a little bit into this other pan there we go okay so we've got that in there we've got this in here and you want to get up the sides just roll it around 
So you can get up the sides and we're going to put them back in the oven so they can reheat up to temperature. We need these guys really, really hot. Really hot. We need that oil smoking hot. We, and yet we don't want it to smoke right before it's going to smoke. Okay. I usually use a high heat oil. So whether you want to use a grapeseed oil or um, I don't like coconut oil so much because it can impart a coconut flavor, uh, a vegetable oil, a canola oil, uh, that kind of thing. Olive oil, it gets kind of dicey about burning the oil and making it smoke. So you want a high heat oil for this. Okay. And make sure you have no distractions. All right. No distractions for this portion of the preparation. Okay, we're not worrying about our toppings yet. We need to cook the crust first, then par cook it. Then we're going to put the toppings on. Okay. So let's have a peek. It's almost there. Almost there. So we're going to bring our batter nice and close so we're not reaching over things. There we go. And then we can put our toppings back over here for the moment. And we've got a little uh, brush that we're going to use to brush on the oil after the crust is cooked on top. Okay. And some people say cook, uh, broil it up, uh, up high in the oven. I don't like to do that because I want to get the bottom cooked a lot at the same time. So let's have a look. And see where we're at here and it can take a little while to get up to temperature okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and if it's hot enough you should get a nice sizzle just move it around a little bit you see that sizzling okay we're going to get it right into the oven and it's still on broil. There we go. Give it a nice swirl. We'll take our other batter. There we go. You hear the sizzle. And back into the oven. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait for it to uh, brown up on the very top, very tip top. And that's going to take, we're going to give that about five to eight minutes. Okay, so let's put a timer on for five minutes. And we're going to keep an eye on it though. We're going to make sure that it does not overcook. Okay guys, so it's been eight minutes. I started my timer at five and then I did increments of two minutes and then one minute. So it's been about eight and a half minutes and I'm happy with where it's at right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out, pull them both out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the temperature to 425. and. Of course, it says it's heated to that, of course. What, what you can see is that we've got the edges are browned up really, really nicely. It's nice and crispy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to now put the toppings on. And then uh, it will have come down in temperature by then. Okay, so all we're going to do. is we're going to take a little bit of oil and we're going to brush this with oil and it's nice nice and lightly browned on the top and really crispy on the edges already so we're going to do that and then what we're going to do i like to put the softer the softer veg first so the mushrooms are going to go first We're going to put some, and you can put onions, you can put whatever your heart desires on a pizza. 
even pineapple. Oh, let's not start that business, everyone. Okay. And pile it as high as you like. Doesn't really matter. There we go. So we've got our mushrooms. And always have all your meats done before you even start. Don't don't think about putting this in the oven and then starting to cut up your veg. Cut your veg up right away at the beginning. Make sure it's all done. And uh, then when things start happening quickly, it will be fine. You'll, you'll be prepared. So I do the same with my uh, peppers. I cut them fairly thin because uh, I want them softened. I don't want them too soft but I don't want them crunching hard. And I mean, it really depends on you. If you want your veg really, really soft, sometimes what I'll do is I'll saute them in a pan uh, ahead of time to soften them up really nicely. And if I want to do maybe some softer mushrooms, then I'll saute them with a little bit of balsamic vinegar and things like that. So it's up to you, however you like your pizza, knock yourself out if I'm gonna to put tomatoes on I'll usually won't put them on at this point I will put them on once the pizza is done uh, and I might put it back in the oven just to give it a quick heat but I don't want my tomatoes cooked and really really soft okay so now I'm gonna put some bacon on just make sure everybody gets a good amount of bacon because bacon is fantastic. There we go. And then comes the cheese. And if you want to just make one really big pizza, I have a really large 12 inch uh, cast iron pan that sometimes I will use and I will just put all of the batter into that. So let's get our cheese on top. There we go. And if you want to do a mixture of Parmesan or do some Monterey, uh, whatever cheese that you enjoy on your pizza, treat it like a pizza. It's really a flatbread, but it works beautifully. And it's a really nice little change of pace. And you notice there's no rolling of the pizza dough or anything like that. You couldn't get much easier as far as dough goes. Okay, remember, we're dealing with cast iron, so gotta make sure we have our gloves on. Temperature should have come down by now, and so we're all set with the cheese. It's gonna take 15 minutes to cook the rest of the way. So the rest of the crust will get cooked. The right underneath and the top are done. But the middle still needs a little bit of cooking and it's just like with any pizza once the cheese is melted and browned then you're good to go then you know you're done okay we're going to come back in about 20 minutes and see what we've got okay guys we're back it's been 21 minutes uh i set it for 20 minutes and then i decided to put an extra minute on the clock and now we can have uh, look at this gorgeousness. Let me take this one out here and we're gonna take this one and put it right here. I'm gonna get the other one. Turn the oven off. Put that there and let's have a closer look at this yumminess. Okay. So let's have a closer look, shall we? Look at that gorgeousness. The cheese is perfectly melted nice and crusty on top oh my goodness let's have a look at this other guy right here right next door right next door 
Look at him. So yummy. So yummy. Okay, let's zoom into this. This lovely, lovely guy. Everything is nice and crispy. The crust is done beautifully. And the cheese is melted really nicely. So hot though, so hot. My advice is you let this rest for about five minutes because when you cut into this baby, it's going to be screaming hot. So, uh, Remember, if you wanted to add a little bit of tomato at this point, you can. You could even, um, if you put the tomato on now, while it's still really, really hot, then what'll happen is it'll warm the tomatoes. It's, and it's best to have your tomatoes out on your counter anyways. So um, you can just put them on now and the heat, the heat coming off this baby is amazing. So I usually just use a pizza cutter be gentle for the bottom of the um, cast iron but pardon my noise but the crust is incredibly crispy all the way underneath look at that crust it is gorgeous so crusty and it's like having a super thin crust pizza but it's made out of chickpeas. So we're just gonna let that rest and then we're gonna eat. Use your imagination, give it a try. If you just wanna try a small one, you can even use one cup of chickpea flour to one cup of water in, in a 12 inch pan to make the crust even thinner. No problem. Just be really careful of the pans you're using, make sure they're oven safe and uh, be careful about bringing them in and out of the oven. That's all there is to it. But use your imagination. Decide what you want to put on your pizza. And give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm on the website, cookerynation.com. I'm on Twitch. I'm on Discord, Facebook, all over the place. Let me know if you have any questions. And I will see you next time. I'm going to go eat my pizza. Bye-bye.